Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, Dave. Let's join this again. Am I working? No. Of course not. Thank you, Andrew. I don't care, I'm coming down here to hang with you people anyways, because you won't come out front and hang with me. How's everybody doing? Did you have a good couple of weeks? I had a great couple of weeks. I have to admit though, I did miss everyone. Yep, I didn't miss you too much when I was heading out the door. But now that I'm back, I have to admit, yes, I missed everyone. And it's good to be back. God is so gracious to us. He willingly calls us, and we hear that call in our hearts. And how spectacular is that? Please join me in prayer this morning as you are able. Heavenly Father, we come before you grateful to be here. We thank you for your call. We thank you for a softening of hearts and minds to hear that call and to respond as we should. Lord, as we come together, please join our hearts and minds as one in your name, showing the world that there is a better place to be, that being a sheep is not a bad thing, not when we have a shepherd like you. Lord, thank you for calling us. In Jesus' name, amen. As everyone is aware of at this stage, we have our light of God moment, where we have seen God in our lives over this week. Would anyone care to add their thoughts to the light of God moment this morning? All right, I will do it. I'd like to welcome Chantel this morning. Say hi to everybody. Chantel came to visit us. So I figured the least we could do is put her to work. <laughs> That's what happens when you come. God sends us each and every time that we require something new or different, something to spark us, to relight our flame and we don't know really what that's gonna be until we get there. Whether it's sitting down with a cup of coffee and enjoying a conversation with Chris, whether it's just hanging out with some of you guys, that's what the light of God is all about, is bringing us together to show the world that there are better ways to be, that we, Look at the gifts that God sends us, like Chantel this morning, and saying, how can her gifts be utilized to show us a different light? And thankfully, she was willing to say, okay, I'll do it. It just goes to show you that the Holy Spirit will put you into some scary situations at times. But it doesn't mean we don't go forward anyways. So keep that in mind as you gather your hearts and minds and you're getting ready to go out into the world. Show the world your gifts and what you have to offer. You never know whose light it will light. We pray this, amen. Good morning to all who worship here this morning. I have several announcements. Right? Okay. 
Bible study begins this Thursday morning at 10 a.m. It's a study of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> and all are welcome. Bring your Bible, and we'll find out what it's all about. The new members class will meet today in the Rainbow Room at 11 a.m. Crossroads welcomes all church women to breakfast on May 13th, the Saturday before Mother's Day. The Koinonia Education Award, a reminder, your application is due May 21st by noon. Um, if you have questions, you can speak to any member of Koinonia, put your application in the mailbox, and all will be well. Um, we have several. Ken? Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a final reminder about the Public House Turkey Buffet dinner to be held tomorrow night, 4.30 and 6.30. Today is the last day to sell tickets at coffee hour. The deadline had been extended to today, which was nice. I'll be away this afternoon. If anyone, say online, wants tickets, please call Sandra Nastro at 508-347-3225. Uh, and she can, she, can, she can meet you here. The, uh, we're fortunate to have the public house in town providing this buffet, like the Irish feast we had, and uh, our organizations benefit greatly from it, and the community enjoys them a lot. <clears throat> our church supported St. Michael's in selling tickets as a church-to-church -church mission, with Sandra Nasto and Sturbridge and me, in Spir Spiral Thomo in Southbridge, we sold 219 tickets. <clears throat> and Spiral will be seeing Sandra this afternoon with more results from, from uh, Southbridge. The uh, last three days, Sandra and I sold tickets out of our parlor. It went well. She liked it in our church a lot. We had one lady call from the Cape coming up because she likes the public house. One drove up from Woodstock, and a lady from Overlook <laughs> went to the Charlton Federated Church. She called and said, the doors are locked. So we said, well, <laughs> you went to the wrong church. <laughs> <laughs> so she came to see us. <clears throat> so that was, that was nice. Uh, many thanks to the public house, ticket sellers, Joe Klemovich did some publicity for it. Catherine with her flyers was great. And the community buying tickets to make the buffet dinner fundraiser a success. A win-win for sure. And it was for the, for the first time for the St. Michael's and uh, it's, it's gonna be great. So I hope to see everybody tomorrow night. Thank you. And Hollis, you have something for us this morning. I don't think we could uh, determine any more silence than what we hear from you folks this morning. So maybe we can give a little cheer. Before, the, uh, uh, before Easter, in all the denomination information that we get, they urge that the time after Easter, we should allow the pastor to take some time off because of the very intense work that goes on before Easter, a lot of things. We're glad that you enjoyed your vacation. Me too. We enjoyed your vacation as well. Uh. <laughs> oh, come back here. Come back here. So uh, now that you have had your vacation, we expect... Uh, great things coming up. So be prepared. 
great All of things. these things. You've already heard what's being said, this, this, and this is going on. Uh, uh, I think I better <laughs> go to my next announcement. Please. <laughs> they do chuckle a little bit, don't they? Uh, they do when you get them going. You've seen our notice, and I've, I, I can't, I've been here before talking about our need for a treasure. Um, the, I'm not sure what the requirements of treasure are. They're, they're written, you know, you, I know you get income and outgo and you record this and they report and all this kind of thing. The one thing I know that some of us are definitely not qualified for this kind of job because I always thought two plus two equals four. No. But at one point, new math came in and it said, no, it's not necessarily that. The letter two plus the letter two still equals with two. So if you have more knowledge about math than that, you probably qualify. That means You know, that, this has fallen totally flat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought maybe that might get a little chuckle or something. No. But anyway. How does it feel to be me? There must be someone in our congregation who does have the qualifications. It's a very important position. Finance meets on, as well as the executive board on the second Thursday night of each month. Those committees are open to anyone. Please come if you have any kind of interest in serving in that position or just knowing what goes on, come. All, they're open to all places. Second Thursday, finance begins at 4.30 to 6, and then executive board from 6 until uh, 7 or 7.30. Consider it, because we do need, we do need the position. Sonia's doing a great job under the tutelage of our former uh, treasurer, Ernie Fancy. But she does need help. We do need uh, your assistance within the thing. So prayerfully consider that. Come visit, find out what's going on. We hope you'll join us. And, and please remember, okay, this is not the Navy where we're told never again to volunteer yourself, okay? <laughs> There's two ways that this can be done. The painless way, which means somebody says, I will do it until February when the church comes together to vote, or we volunteer you. Your choice. <laughs> Oh, yes. No, Ken's not, you know. Ken's so busy, he doesn't, he doesn't barely have time to know his own name. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> this time. <laughs> if there are no other announcements, won't you rise as you're able and join me, please, in the call to worship, followed by our prayer. No, followed by the opening hymn. Even if I live a life of luxury and abundance, the Lord is my shepherd. even if I pass through the darkest alleys in the roughest neighborhoods, the Lord is my shepherd. Even if I come upon people who wish to do me harm, even when my cup overflows, the Lord is my shepherd, we will live in God's house forever. Well, amen. Won't you join me, please, in our opening hymn, Loving Lord, as now we gather on page 427.
would you be seated, please, and join me in prayer? Lord, our doors are open to all that need you in their lives. We thank you for those who have found their way to this community. Holy One, we ask that you open our hearts as well so that we can offer your hospitality to all seeking comfort. Help us to love those who think like us and those who challenge us. Amen. And join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. But deliver us from evil. Amen. The kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The gospel lesson this morning is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. So ends this morning's reading. This morning's gospel we're reading I had it before? Okay. It's not my mic. This morning's gospel reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. 
Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was trying to tell them. So again, Jesus said, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that I may have life. Sorry. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So ends our reading for this morning. May these words inspire our hearts and minds that we are able to go into the world showing people a new way to live and to be amongst one another. Please join me in prayer as you are able. Loving God, we place ourselves before you in faith and hope this morning. Merciful one, help us to pull away from the world and its ways. May the presence of the Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds so that we may become more understanding of one another in the world. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts reflect your love and peace for all your children. And may our hearts and minds be united in love for you and your ways. Amen. I was thinking about this and how this truly applies to the church and to every congregation. You see, we know that we are a community. We're a flock of sheep. We're Christians that gather for many different reasons. Each of us hears the Lord speaking in our hearts and minds in our own way, and it draws us. As we open our doors, we find that some come to this community for safety from the world's injustices in unreasonable ways. Others will come to learn about this man, Jesus, who he is, who is the Christ, the man who gave up his life for the sins of the world. He who was crucified and rose from death and still more will come for a time to join in working on God's kingdom in different ministries and missions. See, no matter why you come, no matter what reason anybody gives for coming through the door, there, a, there has to be and there must be an acknowledgement that Christ is the head of the church and we are its body. Christ is our shepherd, and he will show us ways of being together if we will listen and allow it to take place. Christ, our shepherd, our protector, our teacher. None here today and none that come tomorrow can truly be the heads of God's travel lodge in School of Discipleship. Let's take a walk for a few minutes through today's readings and see what can unfold for us to understand. I believe that John always takes us on an interesting journey if we're willing to open ourselves to his experience and understanding of Christ. Like most parables, there are different places where you may be able to see yourself at times. John's opening this morning indicates that what we are about to hear and what we have heard is a message and teaching of great importance and urgency that calls for deeper understanding. Sheepfolds are something that we're not too familiar with here. We, we don't have too many of them. Anybody have a sheepfold at their house? No, I don't know. A sheepfold. You know where you keep the sheep. No. I, I don't have one. Ken, do you have one? Judy, you had cows. You got sheep? We used to when I was a child. Had a pen. 
I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> so for the rest of us that are new to this terminology, a sheepfold is usually connected to the house and had a separate entrance. It was the place where the shepherd put the sheep where they would be safe during the night and the wolves and the animals couldn't get to them. So, one way in. In our reading today, we can hear the intimacy of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, demonstrated by the sheep's ability to recognize the shepherd's voice. If a flock is large enough to require more than one shepherd, an under-shepherd might be assigned to the task of watching the sheepfold for the night. Both gatekeeper and shepherd have roles in caring for the sheep. However, the shepherd, the shepherd is the one with a more significant role. He comes to the sheep, calling them by name and leading them. And the sheep respond to the shepherd, refusing to answer to strangers, the thief, or a bandit. And these individuals reflect potential danger to the herd. In all the parables of the Bible, Herbert Locklear writes, by the door or gate into the sheepfold through which the shepherd enters, we are to understand a door to the sheep. It's for the shepherd, not for them. Now, a gate has a twofold function, doesn't it? It emits, but it can also exclude. Christ is the gateway, and we, when we enter, we are saved. Ephesians 2.18 tells us it is only through him that we have access to God. When Jesus identifies himself as the gate for the sheep, he points to the ways in which one's place in the sheepfold, and hence one's identity as a member of the flock, was, and each is determined exclusively by one's relationship to Jesus as the gate. One enters this fold through Christ. You come, we see, we study, we follow. We're welcomed. We may not know what our duty is going to be, what God calls us to do. But we come in anticipation and trust and faith that God does know what we need. I look out there and I see different people and I know some of you are sitting there with the gifts and the talents, but you get tired from time to time. Well, our shepherd never gets tired. He breathes new life into us if we're willing to accept that life. He breathes stamina into us. So this way here, nothing can stop. Jesus explicitly identifies himself as a means to salvation. Verse 9 incorporates Old Testament, Old Testament in imagery in this description of Jesus as the gate. The promise of entering the gates through salvation echoes Psalm 118, 19 through 20, which it reads, Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go through them. And I will praise the Lord, and this is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. The Old Testament knew that the Savior was going to come. Not when he was going to come, but that he was going to come and how to identify him when he did come here. The promise of finding pasture recalls the imagery of Psalm 23, too. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. Psalm 23, the Psalm of David, is a psalm that we constantly hear as celebrations of life, but not a lot of other times. Psalm 23, it should be understood, was not written for the deceased and those that it was written, rather, for those that gather to honor and celebrate one's life. It is to remind us that God will get us through hard times, good times, and just times if we will allow them. Jesus' promise of pasture in verse 9 recalls his earlier promises of gifts of water and bread that will end thirst and hunger forever. Jesus says in verse 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they, are, that they may have life and have it abundantly. Gail O'Day wrote that the three verbs identified with theft in verse 10, A, all have to do with destruction and death of the flock, whereas 10b reinstates the central affirmation of the gospel. Jesus comes to bring life, new life, stronger life, vibrant life. The imagery of the gate is both Christological and in significance. The world is constantly attempting to destroy a community of faith. It tries to push those that cannot find justice or resources away from Jesus and his teachings, stating, those aren't for you. The world attempts to draw those that understand Jesus and help to care for the flock while he's away, away from God, Jesus and God's teaching. The world tries to call us away from the work we are sent to, which is to help build and protect the flock from those who would destroy it if they were allowed. How do, how do we, poor mortals, normal, everyday people, hold on to Jesus' teachings in our lives and keep the word, world's ways at bay? Any ideas? It's a trick question. It's scripture. <laughs> Told you it was a trick question. Uh, the tricky part is I don't know what translation you're using. But scripture helps us to hold on to Jesus' teachings. And through scripture, I believe that everything that we truly need to operate in the world, in a community, and as a body of Christ is found there for each of us if we are willing to put in the time to learn them. Now, I do not mean go home and start studying verses. Rather, to understand, to know what is in there and to go out and live it. Just knowing it is not enough. That is not what our faith is built upon. Our faith is built upon action. So, we need to step, make room. We, need, we must be willing to make room and time for God in our lives. Each of us must be willing to spend time with Scripture alone, in small groups of family and friends, in Bible studies, worship, and community, working to clarify the true meaning that we must glean to have a worthwhile life. Jesus was called onto another mission and ministry. He did not leave us alone. As all good teachers and all good parents, he left us something to go back to. He left us a roadmap. 
but he put it in pages between a book. So which means that that book isn't opened and it's sitting on your bookshelf at home or on an end table at home and there's a quarter of an inch of dust on it. Folks, go clean it off. I'm not saying to read the whole thing all at once. No, it's going to take you a few years. Start with the important things, though. Start with what Jesus wants for, for you. What does Jesus want for you? Calm waters, pleasant, pleasant pasture, community, protection, and your ability to go out and work and lead. Peter reminds us that living the life of a Christian is never an easy burden. Today, Christians are not crucified for their faith, at least not here in our country. So you don't have to worry about the fact that you might physically die when you raise up the gospel to a non-believer. But you should know why you believe. And as we know, there are other ways to hurt people. You can hurt them emotionally, and some can even be hurt spiritually. And that's the reason why God gave us this community to come in and get recharged, to come, become in and revigorated and ready to challenge the world and its ways once again. We live, if we live the Gospels and we put them into the world, there is an example set that cannot be found anywhere else in the world at this time. There is a light that's going to shine into the darkest corners of the world if you'll let it. Peter tells us that we follow one that committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. Jesus didn't tell us lies. Jesus didn't boost up the truth to make it more palatable, but he spoke truth in a way that people could understand it. When Jesus was abused, he did not return the abuse by abusing. When he suffered, he did not threaten but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Jesus did not fo follow an eye for an eye mentality. Nope. He showed us a better way. Forgiving us for our trespasses as we forgive. Jesus, Jesus showed the world, especially his sheep, that release from further harm is what is called for as we forgive. We forgive because we are forgiven. Peter shows that when one harbors revenge in their hearts, there is no room for God or God's miracles. Does this mean that we're perfect? Far from it. See, from time to time, we're all going to stray. We're all going to try to find a different way into the sheepfold. And Peter knew this. And Peter probably felt the same way and did the same thing straying from time to time. Peter also told us at the end of his reading today, for you are going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. We have choices on who we're going to follow and what we're going to do. It's just a matter of us being willing to do it and to hear Christ's voice. May it be so. Amen. Our next hymn will be Be Still My Soul, number 566. Please stand as you are able.
Please be seated. God gives us everything we need. Every day of our life, God gives us what we need. And that's what we're called to do, is to help other people to find what they need and to help them to get it. See, as Christians, we're called to give of our time, talent, and treasures. That's what we're doing. We spend our time, we give of our talents, and yes, we return a portion back to God that God entrusted to us. Not because God has need, but because the missions and ministries of a faith community cannot operate without it. So we're called to do everything we can. At this time, if you're new to the sanctuary or you're visiting, you will find that we do not pass the offering plate around. We're still on somewhat COVID restrictions and we're afraid of the flu, which kind of makes sense. So we have an offering box that's sitting in the back of the sanctuary. At this time, if you have not made your offering, please feel free to rise and to proceed to the back of the sanctuary and make your morning offering. For those that are sitting at home watching and you would like to make an offering, please hit the PayPal that's on your screen. At this time, let our morning offering commence.
Please rise. Holy One, we thank you for all the gifts that you entrust us with. We thank you for allowing us to share these gifts, for the open heart and the freedom that comes from it. Lord, as we turn these gifts over to the officers and the leaders of our church, we ask that you instill in them the wisdom of how best to use them that they may produce the most fruit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to what I refer to as one of the most sacred times of our service. Because this is one of the reasons why God called us together, was to sit with one another, to stand with one another, to pray with one another, to worship with one another when things are tough. But also when things are awesome, because that's what our community is about. They carry us when things are tough and they celebrate with us when things are going really good. So at this time, if anyone that's sitting in the sanctuary has a joy or a concern sitting on their heart, please raise it before your fellow congregation in God at this time. So prayers, prayer requests for oh, prayer requests for um, a young man. His name is Greg. He'll be going through some treatments for cancer. Also, neighbors had called me and asked for prayers for a family, Louise's family, I'll say, um, for so many um, health concerns. So please pray for Louise's family and for a young man, Greg. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayer. O 
Oh, you forgot about that part. <laughs> Sorry to make you walk all this way. No, you're not. <laughs> um, prayers, please, for the family of my good friend, Ellen, who died this past week. Prayers especially for her husband, Jack. They were married 62 years. Also, prayers, please, for safety for the Lions River Race, which begins in half an hour. And uh, if you're not going, you should go. It's great fun to watch. Lord, hear our prayer. A couple of joys and a concern. A couple of friends of ours at Overlook have returned home after um, almost one, almost two months in rehab uh, prior to the, well, prior to that, the hospital. And she's doing well. And another one who had a pacemaker implanted, she's doing well. And she's very feisty at age something like 94. Um, also, um, uh, prayers for our family as we travel to Daytona Beach. Uh, next weekend for Benjamin's graduation from college. So that is a joy, and the concern is our safety in traveling. Lord, hear our prayer. I wanted to lift up Diane and her whole family, her siblings, her um, sibling spouses, her, there are many generations that will be without the head of Howard who has passed away uh, last week, and safety to return from Pennsylvania. And may the siblings that remain knit their own network and stay together the way um, the challenge is when a head of family is gone. The next generation has to hold it together and may they continue. Lord, hear our prayer. I heard in the news this morning of still another shooting, tragic. I don't remember where it was, but a man went next door to his neighbor's house and shot. Five, five people have died. One of them was an eight-year-old boy. Some of the women in the family shielded their children so they wouldn't be hit. It makes me sick to my stomach. Every time I hear, solve your problems with a gun, it doesn't work that way, and it just makes me so sad. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Holy One, we present ourselves and our concerns and our joys before you this morning. We thank you for those that are returning home safely, that they have found their way we ask that you watch over those that will be traveling. We ask that you keep them safe and out of harm's way. Lord, this world, as you know, is so broken. Just the day-to-day -day things at times can wear us down, such as illnesses, heart attacks, heads of family being called home. These can rock us, Lord. But we know that we stand on a foundation that is strong and rock solid, which is you. And we thank you for guiding us and loving us and teaching us how to be better. 
Lord, we ask that you help us to go out into the world with the bright lights that you instill in us to show people that we don't need weapons of destruction to make our point. We just need to be able to sit and talk, Lord. But Lord, and unless we're willing to put our own egos and our own self aside and are willing to place you as the head, there can be no peace and no negotiations. And Lord, our hearts and our minds are so tired of this. We wish the rest of the world would come to the same conclusions that we have. That it's love. It's love, Lord, that will get us through all the hard times. It's love, Lord, that will bring us together as one family, one nation, one people. It is your love, Lord, that will guide us in everything we do. Lord, we ask that for prayers and for you to watch over our church and its leadership. May you guide her and them to the best possibilities that are available to all today. Lord, we ask that you watch over the leaders of our town, our nation, our state, in the different countries around the world. Help them to understand that as leaders, they didn't become leaders for their own self-interest, but because they wanted to help. Instill in them the desire, the hunger to help. Lord, we ask you to watch over our first responders that are out there and working today. Watch over our doctors, our nurses. Watch over the ambulance attendants, our fire department, our police department, and all of those that are willing to put themselves into harm's way for a stranger, one they don't know. But they do know, Lord, because we're all connected. Lord, we ask that you remind us at all times that we are family and that we need to listen to one another. We need to open our hearts and our minds to one another. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for being you. We thank you for joining us every day of our lives. We thank you for showing us that there are different ways that we can go to bring upon your peace, to bring about the kingdom. Lord, we ask that you continually inspire us. And yes, at times we're fearful, but we will act anyways, Lord. Just tell us how. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be They'll Know We Are Christians, number 494. Please stand as you are able.
each other we will walk hand in hand And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk in each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And they'll know we are Christians. Please be seated. They'll know we are Christians by our love and not for our love for one another because that is a given. They'll know we are Christians by our love for the strangers, for those that cannot find welcome and housing anywhere. As you go out into the world this week, keep your love on your shoulder, on your arm, Show people that there are better ways to be than what we are doing today. Enough is enough, and it's time for love and peace to reign supreme. It's not going to happen by itself. God will protect you. God will hold you. God will care for you. Know that you are loved. Go in peace, my friends. In Jesus' name, amen.